The opinions expressed in this show are the views of the host and not necessarily that of WTRW, 94.3 The Talker, or the Bold Gold Media Group. The following presentation is brought to you by the host of the program who is solely responsible for its content. Good afternoon and welcome to Make a Change. I'm your host, Terry Martin, along with my producer, Tom Jenkins. Good afternoon, Terry. Oh, good afternoon, Tom. Well, I'm saying you may have to hit me this afternoon because what a beautiful rainy day. And it's just so relaxing. I don't know. Do you find rain? I love the rain. I really yeah. do. I love uh, sitting on the front porch. We have uh, two rocking chairs out on the front porch. It's a covered front porch. And I love sitting out on the front porch and just watching the rain. And especially if there's thunder and lightning. Mm. My wife hates thunder and lightning, so she stays in the house and hides under a table somewhere. <laughs> she which, sounds like me. Which gives me the entire front porch <laughs> to just chill out, to meditate. And my, my kids are starting to love it now, too. So they'll come out and sit on my lap. So the three of us will sit in one rocking chair and just watch the rain. And my little two-year-old, Daddy, rain, rain. Yeah. Rain, rain, go away. No, we need the rain for the garden. Yeah. Vegetables. You got it, honey. (laughs) You know, I was just going to say that to you because I know about your garden. And I've noticed lawns and golf courses and everything now. They're really getting pretty dried up. So Mm -hmm. I'm very happy for this rain today. Mm -hmm. Me too. Well, today I wanted to talk about... Making changes again, because that's the name of the show, make a change. (laughs) But the question is today, are you ready to make a change? So, and I'm asking this, if you're teeter-tottering on the fence over any decisions that you need to make in your life, that you know are for the right reasons and are for the better, then you need to keep this in your mind first and foremost. No one has more power over you than you. In other words, if they, meaning someone else, can't fix our problem, then how can they be blamed for causing it? What do you mean by all that? <clears throat> well, as we keep on talking about it, uh, it throughout the show, so many times, I think it's a cop-out. I think it's easier to... Oh, you to, mean like people are blaming other people for not being able to make changes? Right, and for okay. maybe bad things that happen in their life, or, you know, they, they want to... They want to I don't know, maybe do something in business or they maybe always wanted to take a trip. Whatever their goals or their dreams were, sometimes when we don't accomplish them, you know, it might be easier to say, it's their fault. We don't want to stand up and take responsibility and say, you know what, here's where I messed up. Here's where I made the mistake. Let's do this a different way. Right. Just throw their hands in the air and say, you know what, I quit. Right. Okay, I got you. You know, and if it were truly possible to have someone else make everything right for us, then why didn't we hand the problem over to them immediately after we found out the problem and (laughs) and ask them to fix it then, Mm -hmm. you know? But we know the answer to that. It's ludicrous to, and it isn't possible, and yet how many people do we all know that to their dying day they blame their ex-husband, their ex-wife, their mother, their father, you know, know for all their problems. I know somebody exactly like that. Yes, I'm not going to mention names just in case they're listening. I will get punched. (laughs) Well, I'm sorry to say that I think maybe in my past, that's been me many times. And if we can just recognize it right away and stop it before we actually lie to ourselves by not accomplishing because it's so easy to do. That's really cool that you said lie to ourselves because that's exactly what we're doing. But we believe the lie, which is which is what makes it even more confusing. And this is what I found through my own experiences, is that these lies I would tell myself were actually the, in my mind the truth. Right. So I was delusional. Mm-hmm. You know, I wasn't in denial. I was mm-hmm. delusional, extremely delusional. And at one time somebody said this to me. They said, Tom, victims never get better. Victims never get better. But victimized people get better every day. And, and I said, well, I don't understand. What's the difference? And they said, well, being a victim is a choice. It, you know, it, you, you are not a victim anymore. You're a volunteer. Right. You can be victimized. Bad things can happen to you, God forbid. But you don't have to stay as the victim. You can get better. You can make the change. You can take the, the, the action that you need to take to get better from whatever bad thing may have happened. But if you don't get better, you're going to remain a victim for the rest of your life. Do you think the reason that we do that, this just came to me in my mind, is fear? It's something absolutely. 
Absolutely. 100%. Fear is the driving force behind mostly everything negative in our lives. Fear stops us from doing things we want to do. Fear prevents us from doing things we want to do. Fear makes us do things that we don't want to do. Exactly. Until we can learn how to either stand up to the fear, walk through the fear, break the fear down and realize how ridiculous a lot of fears are. Some fears are, are you know, legitimate. Like if your house is burning down and you have the fear of dying uh, in a fire, you'll get out of the house. <laughs> right. No, that's that's good. But but so many. And, and I mean, for again, this was pointed out to me. You know, they said I was riddled with fear. And I said, I'm, no, I'm not. I'm, OK, I might be afraid of being bit by a poisonous snake. But, you know, fear of dying, fear of burning to death, fear of drowning. No, no, you're riddled with fear. I wonder why fear comes so naturally to us and, you know, and, and strength. And I don't know. Fear, fear is much is easier easy. than fear. Fear is much easier than than strength. I wonder why, though. It's, you know, the negativity it's seems easier. easy. Because it's easier. Yeah. That's why it comes so easily, because it's easier. It's easier to throw our hands in the air to blame other people. It's easier to to just sit in our own crap, as I like to say, instead of standing up and doing something. Is it going to be easy? No, not all the time. But it might be easier than you think. Mm-hmm. But you're not going to know unless you try, and you're not going to try because you're full of fear. Mm -hmm. And I say that not because I'm some expert in it, but because that was me. <laughs> I did that. Ooh, we're telling all of our secrets For this morning. For many this years afternoon. and many different aspects of my life, that was me. Well, what that really means is that no one can be blamed for our past failures, our future failures, or they also cannot be blamed for our reason for not taking the needed steps we personally have to make for ourselves. Absolutely. No matter what the situation is, once again, we have to look in the mirror and realize the only one looking back is, <laughs> is us. Pretty obvious, yeah. And we are the only ones who can make the needed changes. and Or at least start to take the steps needed to make the changes. Right. Now... I may want to make a change in some aspect of my life, but I can't do it by myself. But I got to pull my head out of my butt and say, <laughs> you know what, Terry, I need help with this. Can, will you help me, please? You know, but, why don't so, we ask? They always pride. say it's a man's thing, pride. but I don't know that that's the truth. Yeah, pride. You know, I, I just this is just kind of like a little joke, but it's an example is like looking in the mirror. And you're, and you're looking at your skincare, which I have to get a little skincare. Of course. You know, <laughs> in there. <laughs> But it's almost like saying, okay, I have acne. It's someone else's fault because I have it. It's like, it's, you know, it's, it's no one else's fault. So many things are just ours. But, you know, on a serious note, there could be circumstances that make it hard for us to do what we must do. But there's always another way to get around whatever the obstacle is. Whether you go around it, whether you go over it, whether you go under right, it, or whether there. you go through it. Right. Yeah. Or you just pick it up and move it. I like what you just said, going through it, because the only way to get over something and out of something is to go through it. We have to. You know, what's an amazing thing that I've learned over the years is that facing a fear or an obstacle or whatever that is that, you know, you, you get the little butterflies in your stomach or maybe you become riddled with anxiety or whatever the case is. But then you still move forward, whether you mm -hmm. have help or not. Mm -hmm. You move forward. You go through it. You face it. You fight it if you have to fight it. You, you, you know, you do whatever it is you need to do, but you get through it. And the awesome part is right here. You're through it. It's over. You have that <sighs> feeling. And then you turn and you look behind you from where you just came from and go, holy crap, I can't believe I did that. Mm -hmm. I can't. Be and then all of a sudden, another fear is gone. Right. Right. It's gone. But you can't see that that fear is gone unless you walk through it. Right. And, and we need to be focusing. We need to be focusing on what we need to be doing and not on what we shouldn't be doing or worse yet, what we feel someone else is doing to us that is unfair. Th mm. That is actually, uh, for those that really listen to the show religiously, you know, I have a, a hobby uh, that I like to do. I like to play disc golf. OK. And, uh, and you, you've got that look that everybody gives me. What's disc golf? <laughs> it's like ball golf, except I don't use clubs in a ball. I use a Frisbee right. uh, and uh, I don't throw it into a hole. I throw it into a basket. But most of the courses are in woods. And there's a lot of them where there's really a lot of trees. To... And when I first started playing, I used to get up on the tee box to throw down to the basket. And I'd be like, OK, don't hit that tree, Tom. Don't hit that tree. Don't hit that tree. Don't hit. That. And what do I do? Yeah. Every time I hit the tree today, when I go play, 
I stand there and I look and I say, okay, just throw it right there. Throw it right through that gap. Throw it right through that gap. Throw I, I look at it differently instead of saying, don't hit the tree. I say, throw it through the gap. Mm-hmm. It's positive. Po- yeah, it's not exactly. Negative. Positive programming. Yep. And that's exactly what you just said is many times that we focus on what we shouldn't be doing instead of focusing on what we should be doing. You know, and, and if someone hasn't treated us fair and the truth is that it, it, it isn't f- fair. Right. If you stay stuck and you don't find a way around it, then it, it just eats up your, your precious life and it eats it up by the minutes, the days go by, the weeks go by, the months go by, and then, yeah, the year goes by, and sometimes the entire lifetime of some individuals. And as you said earlier, we've all seen, seen people like this. And how sad, because of what we thought our entire life was really us, it wasn't someone else. Delusions. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it was just not forgiving someone. And that's a really very high price to pay because life is so fleeting to let one moment slip by and to keep blaming others for our choices yeah. and our failures. It's us. It was pointed out to me, and, and I used to have this argument with, with individuals, Tom, you really just need to forgive them. And I say, well, how can I forgive somebody who's not sorry? <laughs> and then it was finally a wise old man, this crusty old son of a gun. He looks at me and he says, we don't forgive other people for them. We forgive them for us. That's such a hard concept. It is. But But when you do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you forgive? Yes. (laughs) Oh, okay. Yes, I did. (laughs) Yes, I did. I still get a knot in my stomach when I think about certain (laughs) individuals, but I have forgiven them. I'm not going to (laughs) forget, but I have forgiven. Well, if what someone is doing to us is wrong, and if we stand there, though, and keep allowing it, then whose fault is it to keep letting it happen over and over again? Theirs? No. No way. (laughs) Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I've taken that to another level. Lie to me once. I now now know what kind of person you are. Lie to me twice. You now know what kind of person I am. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, if everyone could see your face right now, I know you're serious. The way you're sitting here (laughs) looking at me, it's like, (laughs) oh, I'll, no, uh, I'll always be careful and watch what I do and what I say. Back to what we were saying earlier about uh, allowing things to happen to us over and over again. If that's the case, then we're participating with it and it will never end because whatever we are willing to put up with is exactly what we have. And that just reminds me of, of when I owned a grocery store. And the kids would be coming in screaming their heads off because they wanted something. And the mother would say, no, Johnny, or no, Susie. So the screams would continue to get louder. And then their little stomping episodes would start. And finally, the mother would grab whatever it was they wanted, and she'd throw it in the cart. So what happens every time they go to the store from then on? Scream and cry immediately. Right, Mm -hmm. and it continues to get worse. So mom tries to hold out longer the next time. But... That child already knows that they will win, and most of the time they do. So this is how the habits are formed. And maybe to help stop some of the old habits and patterns we're living in every day, could we possibly (laughs) retrain the people just the way that we trained them to treat us in the first place, Uh, only this time not in a negative way? We're the cause of everything that happens to us, so we have to be careful of what we cause. Of course, I'm not including Mother Nature in there. I'm going to disagree with you. Yeah? Uh, I don't believe that we're the cause of what happens to us. Oh, yeah, there you go. Good. I believe we are the cause of how we handle when things happen. That's good. Which goes back to the victim slash victimized. People are going to do things. I can't control people. Right. Things are going to happen. I can't control things from happening. What what I can control is how I handle it before, during, or even after the fact. Very so good. so you you could you could screw me big time. Am I going to sit for the rest of my life angry at you for what you did to me? I mean, you can come right in, look me square in the eye, and right. please, please don't do this. But <laughs> just look me square in the eye and say, you know, Tom, I've had it with you. I'm done with you. And the next thing I know, you're walking out. You're telling my boss something. I'm getting fired because I did something, even if I didn't do it. And you purposely set out to hurt me. Now, I can sit for the rest of my life and blame you. Right. Even though I didn't do a single thing wrong. Well, I mean, obviously, I did something for you to be that <laughs> angry at me. But... <laughs> But am I going to sit in that for the rest of my life? Am I going to let it eat at me? Am I going to? No. 
Mm-hmm. No, I'm going to uh, I'm going to be angry with you for a very long time, but eventually I'm going to have to get past it and get through it. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm responsible for. I'm not responsible for your actions. Right. I'm only responsible for my own. You know, I was just writing this down, a thought that occurred to me. Just an example. You know, we talk about food getting us in trouble. So, OK, let's blame food such as being overweight. Let's figure out what we can do with this. Let's pick oh, okay. this right back up here. We're going to take a quick break. Okay. Okay. Let's we make a change. <laughs> Again, We're something we fun. don't have control over. <laughs> <laughs> this is Make a Change on 94.3 FM, The Talker. If you've got any questions for Terry, feel free to check out our webpage, madariclinicals.com, or give her a call at 866-646-3374. We'll be right back. Confidence. It's something we all search for. It's something we all strive for. When we're confident, we feel we can accomplish anything. And think about it. When you knew you looked good, you walked with your head held a little higher. Looking people in the eye was easy. You felt like you could tackle the world. The first step in finding that confidence is obviously how you look. And when you look good on the outside, you feel good on the inside. Get that confidence you need with Madari Clinicals. They are a unique skincare company that specializes in complete skincare for women and men. From anti-aging to glycolic and even a special clinical line for sensitive skin, Madari Clinicals gives you that confidence. Make that change. Look brand new. Feel brand new with Madari Clinicals. Check out MadariClinicals.com. That's M-E-D-E-R-I Clinicals.com or call 866-646-3374. Take on the world with Madari Clinicals. Welcome back to Make a Change on 94.3 FM, The Talker. I am Tom Jenkins, along with your host, Terry Martin, for Make a Change. And the show today, we're talking about, are you ready to make a change? Are you ready? And we're kind of prefacing this whole show so far with uh, blame, um, the passive-aggressive way we like to say, take responsibility. Uh, And uh, we're using an example now. Terry's going to get into this about food and uh, how we, you know, how it's looked at between us and food and the changes we are we ready to make right it's just this little scenario okay we talk about food getting us in trouble okay so let's blame food such as being overweight is it the food's fault or ours did the food just hop in our mouth yes. without our approval yes <laughs> i was driving down the highway and, and a big mac flew in the window exactly. right down my throat so, so who was in charge of the choice of healthy or not healthy food or how much we ate or how little we ate? I'm going to blame advertisers. I'm, I'm, I'm going to blame okay. people who write advertising because they make it look so darn good that I just have to go eat it. So, so you had no control. So it's nope, none. It's no. their fault, too. <laughs> so smell the sarcasm. There you go. There you go. But what's a simple answer? It's what we always talk about. The mind. Mm-hmm. It's the mind along with the food. And. That is also the way to be able to lose the weight. Just I'm talking about reversing whatever it is. Just we maybe the things that whatever it is that we're trying to change. If we just looked at it really good and say, wait a minute, if it was food that got us overweight, then it has to be food that will make us lose the weight. So maybe if we looked at a lot of our problems and obstacles, that if we just like they say sometimes, maybe if we just write it down, think it through a little bit without overreacting right away. But as I go on, one thing that I think is really vital for us to understand, if someone even has hurt us, is it the hurt? Is it the other person that's hurting us that's gaining the weight? No, it isn't. It isn't. It's us that say, okay, the first thing I do, I run to the refrigerator and it's all their fault. And, and and wait a minute, wait a minute. You're using food as a crutch. Well, what if instead we could turn that negative into something positive and say, you know what? I think at this point I could be better off if I went on a a healthy diet. Maybe if I started exercising, I started drinking water, and I started thinking better about myself. Why would you continue to waste so much time on someone who you think did hurt you or if they did? What, why can't we turn that into something positive? And if you really think about it, when you do that and when you, when you sit there and think about it with the negatives, you're giving that person so much you're power. So much power. 
There's a saying I heard. I hate so it. So much but, you gave your all of your power away to them. But pretty much. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. There's a saying, and I hate it, but it's the <laughs> truth. It's like you're letting somebody rent space in your head for free. Mm. I hate that saying, but and I hate it because it's true. <laughs> well, speaking about being able to change something, I heard a story a long time ago uh, about a married couple who were, they were really arguing all the time. It was a bad situation. They were about to divorce. Now, I can't remember every detail, but it goes something like this. The husband tells another guy all of his troubles and how much he can't stand his wife and all she did to him. And after he explained everything in detail, the wonderful advice giver said, so here's what you do. You go back home, you treat her like a queen, and just when she thinks everything is fine, dump her, drop her flat, get even. Ah, uh, revenge, yeah. <laughs> So let me know how that works out for you. <laughs> so I'll let you know how this works out. So the husband takes the advice and he started to treat his wife so wonderful that life actually did change. So needless to say, they didn't get a divorce. Okay. Years later, the husband ran into the old friend that gave him the advice. And the friend said, I see you're still with your wife. What happened? He said, I thought you were going to leave her. And the husband said, why would he leave his queen when she treats him like a king? I mean, he's not a fool. So, you know, what they're saying there is, boy, it's all words, isn't it? Mm -hmm. and, and, but you have to mean them. But so many times, don't we throw away, oh, maybe a good relationship, maybe a good job, maybe even a marriage because we really didn't think it through. We let those emotions and the craziness just run wild. I don't know. Is that just youth that does that? No. 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 <laughs> so, you, <laughs> no. so some people until, well, forever. Based on my experience and with a lot of pe the people I've met, uh, uh, no, it's not just the youth. <laughs> I see it every day with certain individuals in my life, and I feel bad for them. Right. I do. I feel bad for them because I know there's an, another way. Uh, you know, I think that story is pretty funny, but it could work. And I, and I say, well, well, why couldn't it work when everything is all going wrong? What would happen if we tried to do something similar to that in any situation? You know, even if it's a coworker or a friend, you know, sometimes in these kind of issues, it might not be both parties that are equally as bad in that relationship, but just maybe the other person just can't seem to fight their way out of a paper bag from other issues that are going on. And maybe at that point, just a few kind words or thank yous could bring them around. I mean, really, could it be that simple instead of yelling back and getting out of hand? This no? reminds me of uh, <laughs> another experience that I've had with something almost identical to this. Uh, a place I worked for the longest time, there was one, one gentleman, and, and I use that term not loosely now. He is a gentleman um, whom I loathed. <laughs> mm. uh, I couldn't stand him. I, I see him walking down the hall. I would make sure I'd go the other way just so I didn't have to walk past him. I didn't... I, I'd see Did he give you a reason to feel that way? Or you just... It was my own delusional mind. Oh. <laughs> you know, I, I, I judged him. I labeled him. You know, he was doing things the way he thought he had to do things, and they weren't the way I wanted them done, so damn you, mm -hmm. you know? But I, I couldn't stand him. Could not stand him. And then I did what, what the, your, your husband example here did, is I, I spoke to another person about this. I said, this is driving me mad. I don't want to go to work because of this guy. I don't want to be there. I don't want to help him. I don't want to do my job. I just, oh my God, I can't. Arr! I hope you, you know, pray for him. I pray he gets hit by a bus, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, the, 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 the guy said to me, he goes, try something tomorrow. He goes, I know you're not going to want to do it. He goes, but I want you to try this. I said, what? <laughs> he goes, walk past him, smile, and say good morning, and then keep on walking. No matter what he says, no matter what he does, it doesn't matter. Just say good morning and do it again tomorrow and do it again the next day and the next day and the next day. And after about two weeks of me saying good morning, this gentleman came into my office, closed the door. Oh. Now my mind is going, oh, <laughs> crap. Here it comes. I'm just, and he started to ask me why was I saying good morning to him every morning where in the past I would ignore him. And I told him, I said, because I am trying to get over my animosity towards you. Ooh. I said, I'm trying to not not like you. I want to work with you. I want to be able to do a good job. I want to. And uh, and he looked and he goes, you know what? Me too. He goes, and I've had the same animosity towards you. He goes, you and I have just butted heads for so. He goes, we've butted heads by not butting heads. He goes, and we, we, we need to work together. I said, you're absolutely right, which is why I'm trying to say good morning to you every morning. 
And uh, about a week and a half later, there's an envelope in my my uh, office, and in it is a card that said, meet me at, and there's a specific restaurant at lunch on me. And I met him down there for lunch. We had a nice long talk, and uh, I haven't worked with the man in about eight or nine years, but uh, at least once a month I get a text from him. What a nice surprise How to turn doing? out like that. And all it was was a simple, just to start, I, oh, I didn't want to. I did not want to smile at him and say good morning, but I forced myself to until I meant it. And it just worked out that way. And that's, I think that's exactly what you're talking about here, that are just a few thank yous or just a few kind words. So what could it hurt if any of us, even today, listening to this show, just do something, just just for the heck of it that's and see important. what could happen? What could it hurt? Right. Being nice to somebody by saying a thank you or good morning is not going to hurt anything. But you holding animosity and a resentment and being angry with them, that's going to hurt. Mm-hmm. It's not only going to hurt people around you and them, it's going to hurt you. So what's a good morning? What's a hello? What's a thank you? Years ago, I had even heard on, I don't know what program it was, but it was about people, some man in particular driving up to McDonald's. There was no one that he had to even speak with in the morning. I guess he was alone. Mm-hmm. And just to have someone at the window just say, hello, good morning, how are you? Is That might be what all some people do get. So you don't know what's you, going you on. Absolutely no idea. No clue. You know, do you remember Robert Shuler on television years ago? He w- it was a ministry. Okay. It, it was a very big ministry, Robert Shuler. Okay. But anyway, I remember him saying this in one of his television shows, that we shouldn't be so ready to judge and so ready to tell someone off. You know, you know we see some of these situations like we've been talking about this morning because you never know what another person's going through. And he was telling a story about an airplane flight where this baby was crying its head off. And the father was just sitting there holding him, doing nothing to stop him. Everyone was so aggravated that finally someone walked up to him and said, why don't you do something to stop him from crying? Give him to his mother or something. I had to take a deep breath Mm -hmm. because he said he couldn't because the mother was in a casket in the cargo. Uh All right. Robert Shuler went on to say that people all took turns holding that baby it just gets to me. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you don't know. Uh, they were People were walking that baby up and down the aisle for the rest of the flight, you know, helping this father out. But if you knew, and in fact, if a lot of people knew what was going on in our lives, you know, that you don't mean not to smile at somebody. Maybe sometimes you've got this wrong thought going on in your head and people just don't know how to read your face. And therefore, they're thinking this grumpy look or whatever is aimed at you. Well, it's not. But this story just made such an impression on me. And I mean, that was years ago. And it still brings a tear to my eye because I never forgot it. But what it does is it makes me think back and to that day of that talk. And it just settles me right down. So whatever is someone else's problems now, though... I can't and I don't allow it to rub off on me. I will try to help them if I can, but I just know there must be something wrong. Most of the time, if you just give it a little bit of time, you usually find out what's wrong. Mm -hmm. But one other thing that helped me in my life, and these are just stories that I want to share with other people. I went on this Christian retreat and I learned such a valuable lesson that weekend that I say I do want to share it with anyone listening. I learn I'm not God. <laughs> I think we all think we are it sometimes, but I can't fix everyone's problems. And what a relief to me. That means my husband's problems or my children's problems, my friends, no one, no one's problems are really mine. It doesn't mean that I wouldn't help them out. But in the past, you know, I would just try till I was exhausted because I cared so much about them. You know, I felt it was my responsibility and, you know, I guess women, mothers are the nurturers and whew, that gets pretty, that gets to be a pretty heavy load. But what I found out was many times if I just let the other people try to fix their own problems before I butt in and I tried, <laughs> that believe it or not, many times they actually fixed it themselves. <laughs> I didn't have to do it. There were no it. monkey wrenches thrown in the gears, <laughs> also known as Terry trying to help. <laughs> so that taught you that you're not God. No. 
quit trying to play God. Exactly. And let God be God. Yeah. And it was it just became such a relief because, you know, I really was taking on their burdens. And you know, we have so many burdens ourselves mm-hmm. that after a while I say it's like a bag of potatoes on your back and you just put one more and it, it's it, it just breaks your back. You can't carry it anymore. You just get into overload. And it's just so hard as a parent, though, if it's your children that you're watching them struggle. And it's hard to not just step in and try to fix it. But, Tom, I'm sure you understand what I'm saying with this. When you're watching your children try to walk the first steps Mm -hmm. (laughs) and you know they're going to fall and you just want to go pick them up. It's a hard lesson to learn, but... One lesson that I have learned is that what my job is as a parent is that I also had to learn to step back and that that's also a parent's role. It's as much as helping them, it's just as hard to stand by and watch, step back and look. Well, I think uh, just from, from me doing this with my kids, I'm a firm believer that just stepping back is actually helping. Yes. You know, there, there's a story, uh, a friend of mine used to ride bikes, uh, just not motorcycles or anything, just bicycles. Mm-hmm. And he would ride on these long, long marathons. Well, when he first started riding, he was having this heck of a time getting up the bigger hills. And this group that he was riding with, this one gentleman said, here, let me let me help you out with this and change the gear ratio on his bicycle. Mm hmm. He thought he was helping. Well, my friend was able to get up the hill a lot easier, but it didn't help him grow as a bike as a cyclist. It, it prevented him from growing because oh, that it must was, be my problem. It was too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this gentleman thought he was helping, but actually he was hindering. You know, whereas if my friend just kept, and this is what my friend says all the time, if I just kept riding with what I had, I'd be a lot stronger today because. But, you know, and it's not that guy's fault. That guy was just trying to help, you know, and he didn't realize that until much later on. But, you know, he put the bike back the way it was supposed to be and started to do things a little differently. You know, so sometimes doing nothing is actually helping. Um, And I have found as being a parent that um, if I'm not, it it looks like I'm not doing anything, but actually I'm just kind of waiting and I'm there if they need me. Observing. If, If they need me. If they don't need me. Okay, if they do, I'm here. But I'm sure as heck going to try my darndest to not enable them. I'll help, but I won't enable. And I'll tell you what, that fine line between helping and enabling is fair. I don't know where it is yet. (laughs) I'm still learning. Am I helping or am I enabling? Yeah, it's hard to go. It's hard because we slip up and then we'll we'll want to go back. And then it's just just trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. But what I also learned on that weekend was whatever the problem is, it's kind of like what you just said, but I take my hand, my I take my right hand, if you can imagine this, and I, I put my palm up, and I say, I put it up towards the heaven, and I say, you know, God, I don't want to interfere with your job, and stop me from interfering, because it's so tempting so many times to just step in and do, it, like you said, to, to fix it. But I say, you know, I can't carry this load, and just then, that's when I... After I give it away, I take my hand and turn it back down towards the ground. And I just, you know, I either throw it up or or dump it out. I cannot carry it. And then, you know what? It does work for me. It it just depends on whatever works for you. Right. Just letting it go. And that's how you have to let it go. And speaking of going, we're going to (laughs) go to a break. That was a really bad segue. But (laughs) we are going to go to a break. This is Make a Change with your host, Terry Martin. I'm Tom Jenkins. And, of course, feel free to give Terry a call with any questions at 866-646-3374. And check out our webpage, too, medariclinicals.com. That's M-E-D-E-R-I clinicals.com. And we will be right back on Make a Change on 94.3 FM, The Talker. Confidence. It's something we all search for. It's something we all strive for. When we're confident, we feel we can accomplish anything. I mean, think about it. When you knew you looked good, you walked with your head held a little higher. Looking people in the eye was easy. You felt like you could tackle the world. The first step in finding that confidence is obviously how you look. And when you look good on the outside, you feel good on the inside. Get that confidence you need with Madari Clinicals. They are a unique skincare company that specializes in complete skincare for women and men. 
from anti-aging to glycolic and even a special clinical line for sensitive skin, Madari Clinicals gives you that confidence. Make that change. Look brand new. Feel brand new with Madari Clinicals. Check out MadariClinicals.com. That's M-E-D-E-R-I Clinicals.com or call 866-646-3374. Take on the world with Madari Clinicals. Now back to the title of the show, Are You Ready to Make a Change? Before you can break out of that prison, you must first realize that you're locked up. Sometimes we just keep doing the same old, same old, and never stop to think about what we are even doing anymore. It became a habit. We might want at times to make a break for it. You know, sometimes you just feel like you just are ready to do something, but then very shortly after that, we settle right back down and remain in that prison that we alone created for ourselves, not meaning to Mm -hmm. at those times. And I've done this myself, and I said this earlier in the show when we talked about, I blamed others for things, and I gave up my power to change. I didn't realize it because our minds can trick us, even with a, even in our own selves. It, it just tricks us. We become delusional. Right. Very much so. The grass is always greener on the other side. And like you said, yes, it can make us see right, even when we know it's wrong. But right or wrong, there's always consequences. Just think of it this way. Things are not what they seem. They are what they are. And if we have given our power away to someone else, now that we realize we have done this, we can simply take it back. I mean, don't worry. You're no longer powerless with a... I mean, it's, it's just such a great feeling to get it back again. No one took it in the first place. We gave it away. And that's what we really have to understand. When we're in a rage and things are really going wrong, don't give your power up. Stop it. It's just, in fact, don't you think that's one of the first indicators when you feel like you're in a power power struggle with someone and you feel all angry and upset that whose fault is it at that point? It's yours. I mean, and, yeah, and yeah. we'll raise our own blood pressure and everything. Mm-hmm. Is it worth it? Mm-mm. It's it's not. And you know, there may have been something that you wanted to do for a long time, and you've been afraid to do it. And if that's the case, I love this. It's a clear indicator of the next thing you need to do. Mm-hmm. Do you know what really helps make you feel good? And and Tom, don't get funny here. <laughs> <laughs> You know, what it is, is it's regaining confidence in yourself. I think that's what makes us all feel so good because you look like you have something to say. No, no, I'm listening. Oh, okay. Because when you start to feel better, you do stand a little taller and you talk a little stronger. You even laugh a little more. And more importantly, you look people in the eyes when you talk to them. Yeah. And and you become lighthearted. I think we all, many of us, I know at times... I need to lighten up. I forgot what it was. We've talked about that in the past, having a good belly laugh and or having a real smile on your face that's just pure and simple and you really feel it. You really mean it. It's not that fake imitation smile, you know, and, and then yeah, we all know that guy or that girl. We always we all know at least one person who always seems to be smiling and always seems to be happy. And I don't know about you, but a lot of times my thought process used to be. What kind of drugs is he on? <laughs> What's is he, he taking? Is can, he I, real? can I have some? You know? <laughs> um, but no, there are people, and I would like to be one of those people, hopefully in the near future, who's just content and happy and confident. And, you know, a saying that, that I hate but is the truth and I use it, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. What am I going to do about it? Here's what I'm going to do about it. Either nothing or figure out what it has to be done. Yeah. And it's okay. Everything's okay. It's Everything's exactly the way it's supposed to be. Well, maybe sometimes we have to do that saying that they say, fake it till you make it. Because they say even when you do smile, it automatically does make you feel better inside. So, I don't know, maybe when you're sitting in here by yourself, just smile where no one can see it. And see, let's just try these kind of things that we're saying today. Just see if they work. It's still better to have, to <laughs> they, have a smile than the window. If they look through the window and see me smiling in here and laughing and there's nobody else here, <laughs> they're going to commit me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Or they'll be like, what kind of drugs is he on? Can I have some? <laughs> 
Well, now I do have to get back to talking about Madari skincare. Oh, here comes the shameless I, I plug. Do. Shameless I, plug. You know, <laughs> because if it wasn't for my company mm-hmm. making me research so much, I wouldn't have been able to change my own life like I have. And I have changed it for the better. And I say this, and I, I'm sure I'm not going to get the saying right, but it's something similar to what the Bible says. Men die for lack of knowledge or something like that. And you know, I was really on my way. I feel out. And I have talked about some of this a little before about my health, and I, I will get into that. But I, I say this. I could have kept on wishing and hoping for everything I wanted in my life to change. And I could have kept on making excuses to others for why things weren't changing. But it wasn't their life that was suffering. It was mine. So who would I be fooling but myself? I had to face that mirror. You know the one, that mirror I always talk about? Mm-hmm. Kind of, you know, it's kind of made me laugh. Maybe there was something to whoever wrote Snow White when she was always looking in her magic mirror. Mm-hmm. You know what? Maybe there is something silly to that. Because when we look into the mirror, we always do see. What are we looking for, though? You know, sometimes, okay, sometimes you're looking at your appearance, but sometimes I think we're really studying ourselves. And you might be, when I say that, are are we studying uh, that we're aging? Uh, Are we studying what we've talked about in some other shows, our skin and what it really does reveal? And that's why I want to get into a little more about my book, called Beyond Makeup and why I wrote it because of some of the lack of, the neglect, some of the things that I was not seeing, that we just wake up every day, take it for granted, hurry up, brush your teeth, wash your face, and and everything's fine and you're missing it. Part of those delusions. Well, when I talk about my book, Beyond Makeup, the reason that I wrote that is I want to help people. I don't want people to get so run down that the climb back up to just where you need to be is just so very hard to get there and then to stay there. I mean, it's hard to remain at the level where you feel good about being in, you know, especially if you've been very sick. But many people look at me and they say how lucky I am. And I say, luck, heck, it's choices. And they're continually choices about, you know, did I make green carrot juice? Did I make green juice or carrot juice today? You know, wouldn't I just enjoy having a soda? You know, I can't say that they don't feel good. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people think that I'm not living and they say, you know, start living. Well, I've been in that world of the junk processed food and I saw the rewards of it. And you know what? They were pretty scary. Uh, When I tell people about the Mira concept and to be their own detective of their health through looking at their own skin and their outward appearance, appearance, you know, it reminds me of something that Shakespeare said and it was long ago. He said, self-love is not so vile a sin as self-neglect. You know, I think that's really powerful because self-neglect is most of the time not done on purpose. You know, we just keep on going on and on and we overlook the little nuisances that are there for a reason. And I say, if I only knew when I went to my eye doctor years ago, and he said, Terry, you have no blood in the bottom of your eyes. You know, when you just pull down on, on your eyes and mm-hmm. you look in there, it's, it's always bloody. Well, mine was white. I mean, that scared me too. But he said, you know, you must be anemic. Something's wrong and you, you need to go see a medical doctor. But you know what I did? I quit him. I quit my eye doctor because he scared me. I didn't want to deal with it. I didn't want to hear that something was wrong. There's the fear. It was fear. Mm -hmm. But what did it cause me in the long run? You know, I decided, okay, I could take care of this myself. I'll eat more iron rich foods. But as time went on, you know, there were many other outward signs. Like if you know what moons are in your fingernails. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. On the even when I went to get my nails done, the girl that did my nails, she said, you know what? I've never seen anyone with no moons in your fingernails. Mm-hmm. Now, look, other people were telling me. I knew it, too. I saw these things, but, hey, I just kept on going. Just thought that I, everything would be okay. And I had no energy. 
whenever I would use my energy for anything, I would have this really weird feeling in my body, like blood pounding or not pounding in my head, right? Everything was a, a stress and everything was a strain. Until I say then finally my feet were swelling and I could have gone into cardiac arrest. That's what neglect can do. And that's what Shakespeare is talking about, self-neglect. So when, I, when it got that bad that I actually had to have blood transfusions, I had suspicious cells. I mean, they wanted to operate on me. So why? This is what I say. Why? Just why didn't I listen when my body was talking to me? It's talking to all of us all the time. But I didn't know better. That's why I didn't listen. I took my body for granted like we all do. Well, I don't take my body for granted now. And I said earlier, I want to help people who may be in my shoes. Or if they're not in my shoes, they will be. If they don't start paying attention to not worry about your health all the time. And, I, and this isn't medical advice I'm giving. It's possibly preventive advice. So number one, start taking care of yourself by listening to your warnings. If you even have something, if you don't have something already, just regardless, just start eating correctly and, you know, just begin to make a stand for yourself in your own life so that you, you realize that our bodies have to have quality food. And if you don't have a quality food diet of what you're eating, you're not going to have a quality life. It may seem it for a while that you're getting away with it, but you won't. And I did talk about this book earlier that while I was in the hospital, when somebody gave me this book, Never Be Sick Again, actually, I'm going to try to get him on our radio show. Okay. Raymond Francis. I am sure. going to call and see if he could come on because he wrote the book that I, I know can change anyone's life because it did mine. And, and so I go back again and I say, well, what does all this have to do with skin and the Madari Skincare Company? We'll find out right after this last break. You're listening to Make a Change on 94.3 FM, The Talker. We'll be right back. Confidence. It's something we all search for. It's something we all strive for. When we're confident, we feel we can accomplish anything. And think about it. When you knew you looked good, you walked with your head held a little higher. Looking people in the eye was easy. You felt like you could tackle the world. The first step in finding that confidence is obviously how you look. And when you look good on the outside, you feel good on the inside. Get that confidence you need with Madari Clinicals. They are a unique skincare company that specializes in complete skincare for women and men. From anti-aging to glycolic and even a special clinical line for sensitive skin, Madari Clinicals gives you that confidence. Make that change. Look brand new. Feel brand new with Madari Clinicals. Check out MadariClinicals.com. That's M-E-D-E-R-I Clinicals.com. Or call 866-646-3374. Take on the world with Madari Clinicals. And we're back on Make a Change on 94.3 FM, The Talker. I'm Tom Jenkins, along with your host, Terry Martin, for Make a Change. And today we're talking about, are you ready to make the change? Why aren't you? Why don't you? What are the things that block us? And Terry was uh, just talking about a book that uh, someone gave her while she was in the hospital, and it was called Never Be Sick Again by Raymond Francis. Uh, and then she kind of threw out there on the air that uh, she's going to try to get him on the on the show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there now it's uh, now everybody's heard it. Now you you, you now can't. To, you're you, right. You got to follow through with it. And then she posed the question right before the break: What does all of this have to do with skin? Emma Dairy Skincare Company. She answers everything, and then I cut her off. So let's pick up right there. Yes, everything. Because I learned if my skin isn't happy, then neither is something in my body. And for years, I've been trying to please my cells so they would rebuild. And they have rebuilt. And I don't worry so much about every ailment, as I said earlier, because if I'm not feeling good in any way, I look to water and I look to nutrition to straighten it out. And my research of my own health led me to many doctors. And they were medical. Some were natural homeopathic doctors as well. And the first thing I learned quick was this. Rather, this is right or wrong for me to say. It's, it's how I felt. If I went to a doctor and he was severely overweight, and many were that I would go to see, then I couldn't even hear what he was trying to say to me. I, I couldn't believe what he had to say. I couldn't hear it because I felt in my own mind, if he can't figure out his own life, 
then he sure as heck couldn't figure out how to get me back to health. I just had no confidence in him. Yes, he might have all the knowledge in his head, but then, you know, why wouldn't he want to live? I wanted to live, and I, I was set on a course. And so th I would talk to the doctors, and I would ask them, and they'd look at me like I was crazy because I would ask them about health, what could I do to get back on my feet, and they couldn't answer me. Most of them could not answer me because what I found out is most doctors, I and I'm not positive on this, if it's six weeks of schooling that they have about nutrition, if it is six weeks, that's a lot. And why is that? And, and the answer is because he's learning simply how to treat, not prevent. And we can't blame them because they don't know. That's not what they're going to college for. So I'd say that's our job to take care of ourselves. Yeah, it's, it's referred to as health care. And I think it's ridiculous to right. call it health care. I think we should call it sick care. You are so right. You know, it's, it's, health care is what we should do before we get sick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. we don't get sick. Yeah. I mean, I found when I decided to take responsibility for my life that I wanted to learn everything I could to feel young and vibrant again because I was sick of being sick and tired and not enjoying anything like amusement parks or going for a walk. That was all work to me. I couldn't even enjoy my life mm -hmm. anymore because many people would say to me that once I got to a certain age, everything was downhill. I'm tired of hearing that everything's downhill because mm -hmm. I don't buy that. But you know what? That is what caused me actually to get sick and ignore because I thought that was the way it was supposed to be. And have you ever heard of that book called Blue Zones? Mm -hmm. uh, it was out a couple years ago. And it was all about people from all over the world that lived to be over 100. I mean, the, the, these people are out chopping wood, they're hauling water, and not that we have to even live that hard, but what it is is they're taking care of themselves and they're if you don't use it, you will lose it. So that is... I felt, well, if, if they can live to be long and strong, why at that point wasn't I even 50 years old? You call that old? These mm -hmm. people are calling that old? Well, no, and we should never get that old thought in our head. I, I don't think we should, I don't even know if we should be thinking about the birthdays as they go by as, oh no, another year older. Maybe we should just be saying, oh yes, another year. I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> okay. Change the way you look at things. Sure. Why not? You know, and you're right. And that saying you always say, and I love it. You think I would have that in my head right now. I think you're going to have to write it down. Could you say that again? When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Well, I need to remember that mm -hmm. because I was talking about also some of the sayings that I love and that I, I, I find through, throughout all the books that I'm reading. And I write them down. And one got my attention the other day. And it goes like this. If you don't know what direction to take, you haven't acknowledged where you are. That's awesome. That really is awesome. It kind of goes back to what you were talking about in a couple segments earlier, that if you want to make a change, you have to first realize there's a change to be made. If you don't think there's anything wrong, if you don't think there's a problem or, or a situation or an issue, you can't make a change on it because you think everything is copacetic and that goes back to those delusions that we have about ourselves. Right. And, and if you need help, I know I can help. Now, I, again, I'm not saying like I'm God. I, I'm just saying what worked for me. And that is why I wrote the book Beyond Makeup. And the last half of the self-help guide is so simple that I think many people don't think it can seriously work. And it can if you work it. It can help you find your way and begin a new direction in life. That is something so super important, I think. And it's not just involved with your book. I mean, obviously, yes. But... We can wish and we can hope and we can read and we can learn so much about whatever it is we want to learn. I use this example when I when I, I talk about this uh, a bicycle again, we'll go back to a bicycle analogy here. OK, let's just say for the sake of argument, Terry, you've never ridden a bicycle before, but you want to ride a bicycle. So you go out <laughs> and you buy uh, every book on bicycling. 
and you read those books and you know it inside and out. You understand what uh, the gyroscopic effect is with the tires, the centrifugal force. You understand what makes the gears work. I could I could hand you five hundred dollars. You will walk into a scrapyard. You can take everything. Build me a bicycle because you are the expert on how a bicycle works with the physics and the, you can build it. But does that mean you can ride it? Right. If you don't get on. Exactly. And it's and it's not just the same thing with this book, but it's with everything in our lives. You know, we, we can sit again. I can sit here and wish that I win the lottery. This is I'm not condoning this, mm-hmm. but I'm not going to win if I don't go get a ticket. Mm-hmm. You know, I can sit and uh, and trust that, uh, you know, my wife will take care of me. No, no. <laughs> I need to trust that we can take care of each other. Um, I have to get off my butt and right. do things. Right. I can't just stick around and wait. I can't just wish and hope. And and I, I, we have to do d- action. I mean, that's the mm-hmm. only word I can think of. It's action. We got to get off our butts and take action to make things happen. Mm-hmm. And that's I, I believe is what you're saying right here. Right. And many of the suggestions in my book, they're easy and they're free. They're just changes. They can have dramatic results. And it's just basically switching out of many of the things you're already doing for a healthier choice. And there's an accountability page to help you see your progress so that you know where you're going and you know where you've been. And if you have any questions or if you want a consultation, please call me, Terry Martin, at 570-575-8185. Oh, there's the personal number, guys. That's the personal number. I hey. usually give out the 866 number. She just gave you her personal number. Well, this is my office, and it's located at 415 South State Street in Clark Summit, and it's Madari Skin Care. And the number, once again, is? 570-575-8185. Name of the book? is called Beyond Makeup. And they can come see you for a copy? They can, or they can go online to MadariClinicals.com and order it. Okay. You said there's some simple suggestions in this book. I'm going to put you on the spot real quick. Mm-hmm. Can you can you list one or two of them? Yes, I Just can. That, that, that will make somebody go... Well, First re- of all, breathe. And, and don't <laughs> hyperventilate. But <laughs> okay. really breathe and get that oxygen. Now mm-hmm. that's free. Mm-hmm. Water... Ma- well, who knows? A minimum money, but you have to drink water, and you're, no matter what. So drink water, get a good night's sleep, don't eat after six o'clock, and make sure it's organic. But if you have healing to do, and we all do, from just living every day, make sure that you're not eating after six, so that when you're sleeping, you are healing. Now they, hey, all of that doesn't cost any money. It's just again making some of those changes and choices and one other one walking is free if you can't if you don't have money to join a gym which you know you don't have to do that simply everything is free it's just changing your mind <laughs> making a choice that you want to live just like our one our one person on our show one time said just to look good have a nice shape is not enough reason mm-hmm. it has to be as i say now your soul goal what is your soul goal? And hopefully it's life and living long and strong. And living free. Yes. I think free, you know, okay, yeah, healthy, good, thin. Lighten your load. Good. Uh, <laughs> In more ways than one. <laughs> happy, good. But how about free? Yeah. How about free of all of that insanity? Mm-hmm. How about free of all that craziness? Mm-hmm. How about living free? Mm-hmm. You know, and the only way you can do that is if you make the change or at least start with the steps to make the change. You know, you've got to take that action. So I'll ask the question. Are you, not you, Terry, but listeners, are you ready to make a change? Is there something in your life that you would like to change? Whose fault is it that it's not being done? Right. Whose? Really take a look. It can be done. And it's okay to say, I need help. I need help. We all have at least somebody in our lives. One person, at least one person that can guide us in a direction if we're stuck, if we're stuck. Most of us have a whole boatload of people in our lives. You know, I I know I've got somebody in my life that if I ever have any skincare questions, guess who I'm calling? Whether you and I work together or not, Mm -hmm. I will still call you until I forget who you are, which this past year, I don't think I'll ever forget who you are. (laughs) But, you know, make make. I hope that's a good thing. That's a very good thing. Oh, good. Take the steps to start to make a change 
and uh, it, I, I don't even know what else I can well, say. Well, I have something you know. to say. Okay. I well, do. it is your show. <laughs> it, well, it just occurred to me. Why do we all have that mental block? Why do we all feel that we can't change? And we, we long to. We long to wake up one morning and say, oh, I just want my life to be different. Well, why, why don't you do that then? Just do it. And again, if you have any questions for Terry, call her 570-575-8185 at uh, her new office, 415 South State Street in Clark Summit. Yes. This is Make a Change. Are you ready to make a change? Think about it. Give Terry a call and, uh, and hopefully you can make a change. And I do look forward to hearing from everyone. I am Tom Jenkins. That's Terry Martin on 94.3 FM The Talker. Have a great weekend.